Thank you. Council Member Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam President. In 2013, in the middle of an ele contentious election year, a uh, majority of people on the city council voted for the Viking Stadium. I was not one of those people, and I think a few people who are still here were mixed on the issue. Uh, but at the very end of the year, trying to make something really good happen, our mayor, R.T. Ryback, came up with a plan that I think people felt was a pretty big vision to figure out how to make sure that Viking Stadium wasn't sitting out there on its own. And that is how the entire situation with Wells Fargo moving its corporate headquarters and 5,000 jobs from places around the metropolitan area came to be. And as you move 5,000 workers into an area where there's going to be a large piece of public infrastructure and hopefully about 1,200 residents, putting in a public amenity like a park in a city where we brag about the fact that every residence is within six blocks of a park made a lot of sense. But as many of you know, in fact, a majority of you who ran for election that year, there were many pieces left undone. And in a transition from one mayor to another, where the current mayor voted against the Viking Stadium, but for the Downtown East project, all of this was handed to her office, her staff, and the remaining seven of six of us who are here to try to figure out how to make this an amenity in our community. So this was a pretty big vision and all of the details were not worked out. And now we're 18 months later trying to figure out how to work out many of those details. I'll note that Kevin Carpenter, Susan Siegel, Chuck Lutz, and the downtown business community have done a mass majority of this work for us. To say that any of us have been sitting at the table negotiating this deal with some very difficult partners uh, would be incorrect. Uh, we have our professional staff to figure out what's best for the city and we have to, at the end, take, make a decision yes or no. Uh, we made a decision from the public point of view that we were going to try to make this a public park. The use agreement didn't come out as well as we would have liked and now that's going to be reopened. In addition to that, the Vikings have heard our concern about this. I think they've been somewhat embarrassed by the fact that it's going to take 48 hours potentially to put up and take down tents. And they've worked to find a different location for those tents, potentially providing us with more days of use within the public park. We've heard the public as it pertains to not wanting a big pile of mud, but also not thinking that just having an open green space made a lot of sense, but to have a really amazing design uh, like other cities have in their central business districts where there are a lot of people who are in need of green space. So I think that in many ways, uh, this is the right direction to go. There have been some bumps in the road and I really uh, appreciate Council Member Bender's uh, specific amendment with regard to getting a full funding agreement on the maintenance. I do think this is an ongoing issue and it has to be addressed. I appreciate the fact that we reserve authority to say if we don't like that agreement, then we might feel we have to take a different action and everyone will be in a position to determine if they want to take a different action. Later, it's still hanging out there that perhaps seven, eight, nine people might say, we're not paying for half of the maintenance of that park. And if we can't figure out a different way to do it, then we might not put in that Hargraves design. So that issue is still out there and it's hanging over the heads of all of us who, have, who are working on this agreement. I wanna note, as I know other people have, not one penny of property taxpayer money is going into this park. We are financing the park through revenue bonds, generated revenue generated by parking. I, there are people who don't love that idea either. Maybe there'll be less cars in the future. Maybe we'll have driverless cars. They can drive themselves into the parking lots. Maybe everyone will take Ubers. Lots of people will take transit, whatever happens. But I do think when you have 5,000 employees, 1,200 residents, development surrounding the park, the measly number of parking spaces there will probably be used. It's a risk, as Council Member Glidden said. It's a risk that perhaps only government in many ways is willing to take, but we've taken that risk and we expect some rewards and some promises on the other end of it. And the promise, as Council Member Fry has so not notably said, is that all of the development surrounding this park is private. 
every bit of that property tax base is going right back into our tax base and the tax base of the county and the schools. We're not even, hopefully, thanks to me, there are no TIF deals being done in this area. Not one project is happening in this area with the result of tax increment. No one would even dare ask for it, knowing our opinion. So we're going to have a fairly significant tax base generated by all the plots surrounding this park. Not one penny of that money is going into this park. This park is being paid for out of revenue bond financing. So it is not property tax money. So there are some mis there's some misinformation out there. Hopefully this will correct some of that misinformation. I think that we need to keep moving forward. Just as we did in 2013, we didn't have all the answers then and we still don't have all of the answers today. But if we're going to have a big vision, we need to continue to move forward. And so I wanna thank the mayor's office, council member Fry, council member Johnson and council member Bender who have done quite a bit of work on this in a very short period of time to get to this to the point where I believe a majority of people on the council will support it today.